Hello everyone and welcome back to Mixbest TV Mixing and Mastering Tutorials on YouTube. I'm your host David and in this video we'll keep digging into this mix I've done some time ago for the artist Leon. The album should be about to be released soon. This is an auto pop track with a lot of different instruments, electronic drums, electric pianos, pads, synths, vocals and a lot of guitars. The arrangement is very well done and in the previous video we looked at the many acoustic guitars we had. If you missed that video, link is in the info box down below. And today we take a look at the electric guitars. Before we start, please subscribe and hit the bell icon down below or you will not get notification for the new videos. Thank YouTube. And let me remind you that we now have a Mixbus TV store with t-shirt, mugs, hoodies. If our videos are helping you in any way, you want to support the channel, please visit the store. But let's get to the video. This track had, has a very defined mood. It's chill, classy. For me, it was interesting how to blend the different guitars without having them to stomp on each other and mostly not to overpower the lead vocal while still be able to fill the space in the track, drive the song and provide nice ear candies too. I used a lot of effects on these guitars on top of EQ and panning to position them in 3D space. Multiple were the acoustic guitars, but we have some electric ones as well. Now here I don't have my hardware, so while we analyze single elements in the mix, some things will sound different, specifically I don't have all my two bus chain, uh, one hardware parallel compressor on the vocals, one hardware compressor in insert and my Chop Shop EQ hardware in insert still on the vocals. So that one will sound really different, but bear with me. And if you want me to analyze some other elements in this mix, like drums or synth, you let me know in the comment down below and we'll take a look at those in future videos. Let's listen to the final mix real quick, then we go into detail on electric guitars. Alto, grosso e forte, voglio avvicinarmi a te Tu mi segui con lo sguardo, sono destro, sto sognando, credo presto, lo saprò Una forza mi attrae, un magnete colossale che mi tira verso di te Ora sono qui vicino, bevo un sesso da bicchiere, poi ti chiedo se ne vuoi Okay, so this was the final mix. Let's take a look at what electric guitars we have. So green one would be the drums, red bass, synth bass, pads, and here the blue tracks, these three ones, are the first electric guitars that we encounter. Now I was given only this one, the first and the second. The third one that you see here, I copied myself and now we'll see why and how I processed it. So let's start by, uh, but now that we listen to the single tracks, you will get why. They are mostly accents and they are so very different to each other. So uh, global processing in this case, like we did for the acoustic guitars, wasn't really working so you see a lot of processing on the single channels which is not so common for me but yeah the point is i didn't do any global processing because it wasn't fitting for for these specific guitars so let's take a listen to the first one okay so it has some reverb on it already, a uh, spring, I would say. And then there's the second one. 
which was given me with a delay already. And then I copied this delay accent to another track. So right now without processing is the same, just higher level. So let's see the processing in the first one. There's an SSL channel. You see gain staging first and then nothing else. So just for gain staging purposes to bring it down to a level where I could work with. And the first real processing is the Waves GTR. I use the clean amp, you can see, and I use the double cab. And by slightly moving one side with the delay knob, I made it stereo. And if you see the settings on this side, on the right side here, I use no cabinet and no microphone. So the sound is original as it was because I did like it. And on the other side to make the stereo a little wider and to give this guitar a little more interesting color, I use this bass cab. Let me try to solo this side so you can hear. It doesn't sound that much different, but enough to give it a different color. It's just a little darker. What it does simply is giving me a slightly different shade of the same sound. So with the delay and the panning, they sound really wide. So without would be this. Mono. Now stereo and wide. Yes, so I wanted this guitar to get out of the way of the vocal. Next up is the limiter most likely just to control those peaks. You can see the track has a really tall peaks and this will probably control some of them. So the point here is the guitar is a little too peaky. Now is a lot more soft and it brings up the spring reverb which is on the track already printed so i didn't want the peaks and the sound of the pick itself hitting the strings to poke out of the mix too much this one's perfect it's just flatten things it makes it sound like the the pick was hitting a little softer than it was and then simple eq stock pro tools basic basic movements here you can see i'm cleaning up around 600 high passing low passing and giving it just a little bit of air on top without and this goes to the guitar out second guitar i was given one track of this accent So the very first thing that I did is I copied the track. And as you can see, I panned one 50% on left and the other 100% hard right. So let's take a look at what I did after the copy, because this is important. I used the lo-fi on the copy. You can see without it, sounds like this. And with that, it's a lot more dirty and I use the sample rate to darken it. So there's distortion and pretty much low pass filtering. Sound a lot more gritty. And one important thing is if you take a look at the level meter here without the lo-fi the peak level is a lot higher we're almost got full scale 
with the distortion on obviously the sound changes but the byproduct of that is that we gain a lot of headroom see our saturation again as we've seen in many other previous videos works a lot like a limiter so the next one is the SSL you see filters here and gain staging again there's a lot of cutting cutting highs cutting low mids cutting lows and filters too and the, the low pass filter is pretty high as a 2k and there's also some compression because with the lo-fi we flatten the transients with this compressor i wanted to give a little more detail to the transient back okay so compression and mostly subtractive eq here but then the other thing since this is a copy and what i wanted to do is i wanted to make these electric guitar stereo again like i did for the first track so i copied the track and i put a delay on this one now you will not hear much of a difference by itself aside from a little bit of saturation but when we put it next to the other if i bypass the delay they sound like this with the delay on okay they sound stereo I want you to notice one thing before we go on the processing of the first of these two guitars. Uh, pay attention to how different, so very different, is the stereo image of the first one compared to this one. These two are not that wide and kind of close to us. while the first one is really, really wide. And far back. So let me engage all the plugins for a second so they sound like this together. So we feel the stereo image very well with this one being panned 50% only. Um, the difference in, in positioning is very important, was very important for, for this mix. So let's take a look at the first half of these two guitars. We have SSL for gain staging again. And just a low pass filter. Gating for the noises. And again, our lo-fi. You can see differently from the other one, I didn't use that much distortion and I didn't use the sample rate, the low pass filter on this one. So the difference is a little less noticeable, but it's still there. Without. It's a lot weaker but being conservative with the settings with the distortion specifically helps me maintain the same tone but just bring up more detail more sustain the next one is saturn and let's hear right away how it is with and without i use the clean tape with So there's a lot more transient, spiky brilliance, and I want it just to match the other one because it has more distortion. And we also eat up a little bit of headroom because of the saturation. Again, take a look at the level, at the peak level. Without saturation, we're up here. With the saturation, we change the sound, we enhance the sound, but we also gain headroom. And we gain a lot of it. Next one is Transient Designer, the bittersweet. 
Now we enhance the sound with the Saturn, but as you hear, there's a lot more peakiness in the transients. A little too much. So I used the Flux transient designer to remove a little bit of attack and to flatten, to make it not so harsh, not so pokey. Okay, it's a little softer, it matches a little better this one, the, the, the first one. And this one helped for sure, but taking a look at what's coming next, uh, it wasn't enough. So it was still poking out of the mix, and I did pretty much the same thing that I did on the first guitar. Okay? Basically flatten the attack. doesn't matter if it's 12 dB of reduction on, on a limiter. Um, nobody cares about that. All we care is how the mix sounds at the end of the day. Okay. Then we have this other bridge guitar here, which launches the bridge before the chorus. So let's mute all the plugins in there. Okay, so we have the same Spring Reverb on, it's a stereo track. The first one is the SSL for, again, gain, staging, and low cut, around 130. This removes the sub-B and low end that we don't need. There's a 1 dB cut around 250, and the main EQ. Corner frequency cut around 100. Because this might sound big and, and nice by itself without the this cut is a ATB cut is a big cut, but in the mix it, it it muffles things. Next EQ, again, cut 4 dB at 93 and a low shelf removing again some of the energy in that range. Actually, if you look at this curve, is almost like a Tilt EQ. I also boosted 3 dB here around 6 to give it a little more bite. And again, a limiter. In this case, it's not even working at all because it was there for safety net, probably, without anything on. And with this on. Now, this second guitar goes to the second guitar bus output, where we have, again, SSL for gain staging, more low cut filter, and a cut around 500, and nothing else, really. But next one, you saw me using it on the acoustic guitar, again, for the same purpose, to tame the peak noise, the peak accent, so the Transax Multi only work in the, the higher bands. It's shaving off a little bit of that high peak. Again, it makes this guitar sit better in the mix. It's an additional guitar, it's not one of the main elements, it needs only to provide some more power while going into the bridge. So I don't want it to be, I don't want the peak sound to come out of the mix. It's subtle, but it controls things. Next, the amp. This is 
pretty straightforward. It changes the sound altogether. Warm amp, you can see the settings. Double cab again. I don't think there's any delay this time. Yeah, because the track was already stereo. So we just got different mics and different cabinets to make the sound a little more interesting. That's it. Different left, right gives us a wider stereo image. Then the Pro Q2 again, band limiting the whole guitar. We've seen in the first single track, we already had a lot of energy in this uh, 100 range, which is still there with the amp even more probably. Extended the bandwidth a little bit. See again, it sounds nice by itself. But it was too much in the track, so we needed to reshape the low end here. But we have the last lead guitar bridge. Without anything else, sounds like this. So it's a stereo guitar, there's already delay and reverb. We use SSL for gain staging and the first bulk of EQ, low cut, high cut, and this boost here around 5K, removing again something around 300, 400. If we bypass the EQ. a little brighter and we removed that resonating delay low end and again this is a near candy doesn't need to be like full and all out it just needs to provide an opening in this part of the song but then i added the delay, because the delay they had on, it was a nice idea. I just wanted to add to it to make it a little more, I don't know, it felt too slow for the track for me. So I turned it into this. So now it's ping ponging and we have still the delay, which was of course printed on the track. But one side is left alone completely. You can see no delay, no anything. No filters, no modulation, no LPF. The other one has delay and some modulation. Without. The difference is pretty big. Uh, it goes from being pretty small and almost mono-ish to stadium-like wide. And since this is the only part of the song where we have this sound, I really wanted to make it, you know, special, strange somehow. I was testing this one. The Brower motion. So instead of the, the plain good old ping pong, which works, I added, you see the mix is about 40%, this movement that makes the guitar a little more interesting. From this, to this. So this way, the left and right movement is a little less usual, is a little more complicated, is a little more interesting. In the track, sounds like this. Okay, then we have the last guitar, I think. 
which is this special here when there's the radio vocal. Yeah. So these are two performances. There were two mono tracks. They are panned left to right and they go to this guitar palm output aux. You can see there's processing on. So let's bypass everything that is in these slots. The left one would be this. With the SSL, we do the low cut and then nothing else. And the EQ gives us just a little bit of high end. Very simple. The next one is pretty much the same. We do the low cut and nothing else with the SSL. Let's see how it sounds without it. Cut the low end. The EQ again gives us presence. Together they sound like this. But the bulk of the processing for these two is happening here on the guitar palm output because the sounds are very similar. The, the pattern is what it changes. So I could use group processing in this case. First one is the EQ to remove all the low end that I didn't need. and band limit the, the, the sounds, both of them. Then they were a little bit plain, so sense amp. This one really gives us the amp feeling as opposed to I don't know, a guitar direct plugged in, in, in an interface to me. Cardboard. And we've seen the trend with these guitars. While keeping them somehow clean, because the mix is a pop song, there's still need for some grit and some distortions on these guitars. If anything, to have contrast with the acoustic guitars. Distortion and then reverb. Just a little bit of room. Without. And we have to listen to the mix here. Let me put everything on again. Because this is a moment in which we need space. You know, the listener takes a breath. And without the reverb, these guitars would be right in your face. So dry. So it makes sense that we give them a space that is audible, that is not so subtle. Big room, okay? But next, there's some effects. We, again, want to keep these guitars moving and going left and right and, and somehow modulating because it keeps the attention of the listener high. So... We have four pedals here activated. The panner, let's, let me activate one. Then we have the EQ. harshness that it comes from the ps1 of course is distortion so it adds a little too brightness on top 
phaser to modulate. I wanted to give this kind of underwater feeling with these guitars. And then the delay. I was really thinking, picturing when you blow air underwater. That's that's what I was looking for. And this one actually gave me that that feeling very well. Without the effects. Okay, next up is the limiter, probably to control some peaks, simple enough. As we've seen for many of these guitars. And then the last one, the mode mod. Or again, give another type of movements. We've seen we used phasers, we used the Brower Motion on the other guitars, we used simple stereo delaying, and I just wanted to use something different, again, to, to give another kind of modulation, another kind of panning. This one is, you can see, should be panning behind your head. Without. without it is still pan because we have a panner uh, pedal here but i don't know this one makes sits the guitars way back almost behind your head it's a nice feeling for this kind of bridge especially if we listen to the mix on this on this part where the vocal is radio -y and it's right up in your face. It, it has stereo elements, but it's pretty much in the middle. So it's nice that these guitars are behind the vocals. But this is it for this video guys we've seen multiple acoustic guitars in the previous video we covered the electric guitars on this one both rhythmic and ear candies and special bridges and let me know if there's something else on this mix that you want me to cover and analyze for example we have several bass synth tracks we had the drums uh, I'm missing a lot of hardware on vocals, but we can try to recreate. You guys let me know in the comment down below and we'll take a look at things. We have a lot of background vocals too, so let me know. But that's a wrap. This is it for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope it was useful. If you liked the video, please don't forget to click the like button. If you have any question, leave your comment down below or post in the new community page here on YouTube. That's the best place to post your questions, to which I will answer in vlogs and Q&As or videos questions about this specific mix or anything else you want to ask stay tuned for the next videos guys join us on facebook and twitter and get all the news about the channel upcoming videos and series and access to exclusive content please keep supporting mixbuzz tv by visiting the store sharing the videos and spreading the word on blogs forums social media subscribe click the bell icon if you haven't already and see you next time